On the weekend, I spoke to the Association of Professional Agriculturists of Ukraine. So that was interesting. I've spoke through a translator twice now, beekeepers in Estonia and beekeepers in Austria. And those two groups had a professional type translator to help uh, convey what I was saying. But this one was a little bit different because they didn't actually have a professional translator. They just had a beekeeper who knew English. So he was trying his hardest to translate what I was saying. And so I would say something he would translate and this kind of the, the very awkwardness of <coughs> speaking through a translator. So my presentation probably didn't go through very fluidly and maybe I call these things experience building exercises. And I think if I were to do it again, I would have simplified things a little bit. And then, you know, with every, every uh, speaking point throughout, provide more punch during when I was speaking, just to help uh, convey what I was saying, maybe a little bit more effectively. So at any rate, that's, that was kind of neat. Because apparently they watch my videos. There's a beekeeper that translates my videos into the Russian or Ukrainian. And they watch what I do over here in Canada. Our climates are somewhat similar in a lot of ways. It's a big country, but... So there's a lot of similarities. And agricultural production is very similar. The economics... The only thing is they're in war and we're not. We didn't speak on that because that was not why I was there to speak. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because he requested for me to provide him uh, some input or more detailed input on protein patties and how to mix them and what to use and and just everything around that. So I think what I'll do is I'll provide just a very simple, uh, after this, I'll provide just a very simple video on the recipe and the purpose of the ingredients within the recipe and how I feed the protein patty to the bees throughout the year. So I'm going to provide a little bit of context on the supplement that I mix for myself. This year, you're going to notice that I'm buying my supplement. Um, I'm going to buy global patties with the Apis Biologics mixed into it. Uh, typically, I mix my own patties. And the reason why I'm not doing it this year is because I just basically don't have time. So I'm sourcing that out this year. But you can't beat this patty recipe that I'm going to provide here. It is very basic. It's affordable. The bees devour it, especially when you mix in all these additives. It is a very good protein supplement. I'm going to provide some further content in the description below. I'll leave a link to a previous conversation I had with Andrew Munn, who is the maker of Apis Biologics Bioactivator and Biocontrol. And that product I put in my supplement to add another layer of nutrition. So I'm going to show you all the base nutrients I put in. I then put this Epis Biologics Biocontrol in there, or Bioactivator. I put it in there just to help provide more nutrition uh, and balance out that nutritional profile uh, to make it um, more usable, I guess you can say, for those honeybees. And I'm not going to try to explain it because I can't. Um, but if you watch that video, Andrew dives into the science and he would talk all night about it but we have I think I've been able to capture it quite nicely uh, to describe the purpose of this supplement and how it works all right I'm also going to leave a link to Randy Oliver's um, what does he call it his protein patty nutritional spreadsheet his calculator he has a spreadsheet that has um, a list of ingredients that you can put into your patty and then what he's done is provided the nutritional value of those ingredients and then scales it 
or measures it according to what the bees need within their diet. And I think he uses lysine as his first limiting, which puts a lot of pressure on the proteins, but it'll show you exactly where um, these off the shelf products, if you use them, where they lack the nutrition and where you need to invest a little bit of money on bringing those specific nutrients in to help balance things out. It can get kind of costly doing that, but if you want a well-balanced feed, then you know this is one way where you can determine the deficits and then fill in the blanks. Uh, this Apis Biologics product that, we, that I use uh, doesn't so much balance out what I'm gonna provide here because it takes a little bit of money to invest um, in those specific nutrients to bring the balance up uh, is what I used to do. Uh, if you're going to use a, an available feed product, they basically have things balanced out there. So then you can just use Apis Biologics for those other uh, nutritional re requirements. So at any rate, here is the protein powder recipe that I've always used and plan on using again. And what I like about it is it's off the shelf and it's cost effective and the bees absolutely love it. They'll devour this product. Um, it's the soy flour Beruges mix, so half and half of that. And let's say you're doing a 50 pound batch, it's roughly 15 pounds and 15 pounds, and then 15 or 20 pounds, whatever, of sugar syrup, preferably high fructose corn syrup. And the reason why I like putting corn syrup in is because of the hygroscopic nature of that feed product and it absorbs moisture and that patty will stay forever soft. You actually don't really have to wrap it up. It'll stay nice and pliable. But if you have to use sugar syrup, use an inverted like a sucrose and it dries down just a little bit slower, but it still dries out. If you have to mix water and, and, um, and sugar, that's terrible because it just almost evaporates and leave, leaves you with this stiff block of uh, product that the bees can't access. So one way you can manage that is by wrapping it up with uh, wax paper. I like wax paper ex instead of wrapping with plastic because with plastic you gotta go in and pull it out. With wax paper the bees will actually tear up and they remove themselves. So if you can use corn syrup or if you don't have corn syrup use inverted uh, sucrose. Just try to keep the waters out you know, the water evaporates and then it leaves a hard rock. So, you know, do what you gotta do. But mix it until it's thick, you know, a really, really thick peanut butter and it will kind of stiffen up overnight. You don't want it sloppy and too thin. You want some substance to it. Um, within that, then I start adding other uh, nutritional um, additives, right? So if you're looking for cholesterol, if you're looking for fats, if you're looking for vitamins, if you're looking for minerals, a really good addition to this patty mix would be egg yolks. So you crack the egg and just put the egg yolk in because it's the best. And you know, that's pretty much, that egg yolk provides the food to develop a living organism. So it pretty much has everything in there that it needs. And if the, if the bees can use that the same way, it's going to have the cholesterols and the fats and the vitamins and the minerals. So depending on how much money you want to spend, crack two or three eggs in to the mix. And, uh, and that just adds to the overall patty nutrition. If you want to add to the oils, or if you want to add to the fatty acid profile, what you could do is add some oils. Don't use canola or vegetable oil because the omega fat uh, ratios are kind of out on that. If you want to use something that's going to be usable for the bees, um, use coconut oil, use flaxseed oil, and use borage oil. Those, uh, those oils have a fatty acid profile that's a little bit closer to pollen and the bees can utilize it a lot better. So if you're going to use oil, uh, it, it also, it, you know, makes for more of a pliable patty. But if you're going to use oil, use something that the bees can actually utilize. And you're going to notice that this is a little more of an expensive way to go about it. Vegetable oil is going to be a lot easier to use and a lot cheaper, but the bees aren't going to use it. So put coconut oil, flaxseed oil, and borage oil in there 
makes it one to one to one half, and that gets you pretty close to the fatty acid profile that's typically available in pollen. So then what I do, if you're going for another layer of nutrition within your patty, I throw in some bioactivator. So what this is, is just an additional supplement to provide some of those very critical nutrients, just to add that layer of complexity into the patty to try to achieve an overall higher nutrient-based product for the bees to consume. If you want to increase your consumption a little bit more, dump some granular sugar into it and, you know, build some bees, just like making a cake. Add the ingredients, stir the pot, and build some brood. I was asked to explain in detail how I use the protein patties to the benefit. There's comment about the supplement being expensive, and I agree with that and we don't need to be wasting money. So we don't use the product if we don't need to use the product because we're trying to achieve something, right? There's a purpose of using the supplement. That purpose is to fortify their diet, try to fill in the holes of nutrition, maybe because they're not accessing enough or a balanced diet. We're trying to achieve better nutrition. We don't want to be foolish enough to think that we can replace pollen Pollen is the bees' feed. It is absolutely everything they need to be able to sustain their development. We're not naive enough to think we can uh, switch that out, but we need to, at times, use a product to, you know, level out the swings within nature to provide a nice, steady, even growth of those colonies throughout all the variability. And if you can do that, you just make a healthier bee. So I focus on two periods of time throughout the year. One being in spring is very important for the development of the colony. And then one in fall when they set their colony up for winter. When the bees come right out of the shed, typically there's a lack of pollen. And they're building out these spring nests. I give them absolutely everything I have at that point in time. Because it's probably the most important time within the honeybee year is flipping the winter nest into spring you know so you just pour the coals to them and i feed in about you know three maybe four week period of time there give them a pound give them two pounds if they need it give them three pounds if they're using it and i just give it to them <clears throat> as soon as that pollen starts to appear in the countryside i stop and i let the bees gorge on that natural nutrition you know what they need they need that natural stuff to be able to fulfill their development. But throughout the rest of spring, I'm watching and I'm watching for variability in the weather. So if there's, you know, if the bees are chugging along and there's a cold period come in, we have to make sure we maintain the feed that the bees are, if they don't have enough stores within the nest, we have to make sure that they have enough protein, enough feed to be able to maintain the momentum of their development throughout that period of dearth, you know, that that shut down due to weather. Because if they do fall flat on feed, they will pull back, the cannibalize their food until they find that equilibrium. And it sets the colony back. And it not only does that, but it also adds a layer of stress. And as soon as you add stress, you open the opportunity up for disease. And then, you know, son of a gun. So what we try to do during those periods of time through spring is feed when we think those periods of dearth are coming throughout the spring. You know, it's quite natural to the spring to have good periods and cold periods, good periods and cold periods. So we just fill in those cold periods with nutrition to help keep that colony growing all the way through spring. Also, later on in spring, we fall into natural dearth. And we don't want the colonies to slow down and kind of stagnate their growth. We want them to keep going right into the honey flow. So after the dandelion typically, and after all the fruit and trees are done, we drop a pound or two of patty on just to help maintain that heavy brood rearing a little bit further, a little bit closer to the honey flow to where they can grab onto that pollen and then shoot them straight into the honey flow. The second period of time that I feed my colonies is right after the honey flow going into fall 
And what I'm trying to do is just fortify their diet to build healthy, fat winter bees, right? And let's say the, the honey flow ended a little bit soon. We have a period of time there where it's really critical for brood development. I want to keep that queen laying as far into fall as I possibly can get her. Well, not too far, but I want her well into September, almost touching October with brood. So I give them like two pounds right off and then another two pounds and another pound. So up to about five pounds of patty from after the honey flow well into September. But as Labor Day comes, we have Labor Day. That's typically the first weekend of September. I'll stop all my feeding that time, have the bees clean up any of the leftover feed because at that time I want them to have that winter nest set up. And then I want to start backfilling those nests to shut them down, right? Just kind of restrict. They already have that winter nest fixed, shut them down going into September. So as we're in the middle of October, there's no brood. And at that point in time, we can target those mites with oxalic acid vapor and kill those, kill those mites. That's my strategy and I'm sticking to it. Take it at face value. You might have to move the timelines to suit your specific areas. Northern hemisphere here is basically the same, just adjusted back and forth a bit. So good luck with that and build some bees.